Hello everyone, welcome back to this new very interesting video which we are going to cover today on the topic limits. Okay, so with the help of this experimental setup, I have a very nice you know, measuring scale out here, a very innovative one and with this we are going to understand the concept of limits on any given function. Okay, so just stay with me for the next two minutes and you're going to learn something great. Okay, so as you can see I have a measuring uh, scale which imagine I can move this ball on the function in this manner and at any point of time I get to know the x value and the corresponding y value as I move the ball along the given function. Okay. Now I want to find out what is the definition of or maybe I want to understand in a more better and lucid way what is the meaning of limit extending to a f of x. Okay, I want to get to the definition with this entire graphical demonstration. Okay, so let quick let me quickly assume that when x tending to a, the value of the function, the output of the function is p. That means when limit x is tending to a either from the left side or from the right side, let's say every time I am approaching the value p along the y axis. That means let me assume that the value of this is p as per the diagram I have over here. Okay. Now I want to create a definition of this. Okay. This is just an abbreviation. What is the definition? All right. Now, as you can see, the function that I have over here, if I place my pointer right at this point, you can see the arrows are pointing towards x equals to a over here and the y value is pointing towards p. So that means when x is tending towards a either from the left or from the right, you can see my horizontal arrow it's pointing towards the point p. That means the limit is tending towards p. Okay. Now I'm coming to the very important part right now. Suppose you people are volunteers and I am doing an experiment. Okay. I ask you tell me a very small positive number remember positive number okay a very small positive number as small as you can does not matter okay as small as you can let's say you people have told me the value 0 0.001 okay so this is the value suppose you people have given me you could have taken my many more zeros over here after the decimal 0, 0.000000 does not matter and a 1 at the end. Okay. So whatever you tell me, I call that number by the name epsilon represented by something like that. Okay. So you have given me a number. Remember that this number you have given me and it's 0 0.001 for now imagine and I call it epsilon. Okay. Now based on your given number, what I do, I am going to select a new number called delta and I am clever enough to choose delta in such a way for this case imagine I am taking 0 0.0001 so I am making my delta smaller than the epsilon you choose. So whenever you choose an epsilon I can choose a delta suitable to me which I can make it even more smaller. Okay. So now try to imagine that this is my a minus delta and on this side I have the A plus delta. Okay. So delta is very small. So imagine this is a very much magnified image I'm drawing. So basically this much distance from A to A plus delta is the delta length and again this much is the delta length. So I have gone delta length on both sides of A. So this is A minus delta and that is A plus delta. Okay. So I will just draw two vertical lines here. Okay. Just two vertical lines. Alright. So now I let imagine that I have limited you within this interval. That means you are free to move inside a minus delta to a plus delta. You are free to choose any value of x inside this region, not outside. Okay, I have fixed you inside this space. Okay, and this delta I have chosen as per your choice of epsilon. You told me a value of epsilon, based on that, I choose delta. Okay. Now imagine your p plus epsilon is somewhere over here from here till here. This is imagine this is your p plus epsilon value and this is your p minus epsilon value. So initially you had your p minus epsilon, you had chosen the epsilon value. So as per that I have got p plus epsilon. So that is obviously greater than p 
and have p minus epsilon which is obviously lesser than p and based on that epsilon i have got the delta and created the delta neighborhood or delta region around the point a and a epsilon region around the point p okay now as i told you you are free to move along the x axis in between this interval you are free to move anywhere you want okay so now suppose i am moving the pointer along the x axis but i cannot go ahead of this particular point and i can't go behind this particular point okay so that means i can move this uh, round ball maximum up till that point and i can move it along the curve like this and bring it down minimum to this particular point and cannot go beyond that okay so now imagine you are arbitrarily choosing okay arbitrarily choosing any value in the x axis in between this region okay let's say you have chosen this particular value which is the ra any random value x you have chosen over here on the x axis but remember i am allowing you to choose x only in between this region okay that means you have chosen your x your x value belongs to the region a minus delta to a plus delta so your x belongs to a minus delta and maximum going up till a plus delta okay so you have chosen x in between this region now observe very carefully as i move my cursor okay uh, this ruler as i move it from a minus delta to a plus delta and when i'm coming to x see now my pointer is pointing towards x okay so my horizontal pointer is pointing it towards x and my sorry my vertical pointer is pointing towards x and this horizontal pointer basically represents the value of y corresponding to the value of x right so corresponding to this value of x as you can see it's aligned with my ruler this value of x my output is somewhere over here right so my output value is somewhere over here that means this point corresponds to f of x so if i put this x as the input in the function my output is this particular point which is f of x now just imagine whenever you take an x from a minus delta to a plus delta the horizontal pointer can never go below p minus epsilon and can never go above p plus epsilon because just see i have chosen delta in such a way that when i move this ball along the curve maximum to this point the horizontal pointer can maximum come up to here which is definitely below p plus epsilon and when i move my ball along the curve and come down minimum to this point okay now you can see my pointer can go down minimum okay sorry my pointer can go down minimum to this point which is still above the p minus epsilon point okay it's still above the p minus epsilon i cannot go down below p plus epsilon so whenever i move along the curve in between this range my horizontal pointer can never go below p minus epsilon and it can never go above p plus epsilon now that you've understood this concept so this basically refers to that my fx value okay so this is my fx value corresponding to this particular x okay correspond i had got this particular value of uh, the function corresponding to this x this is the fx so any random x i choose in between this interval which is given by this thing my fx is lying between p plus epsilon to p minus epsilon and it cannot go beyond that as i have already demonstrated here that means my fx value it lies between maximum it can go up till or maximum it has to be lesser than p plus epsilon and minimum it has to be above the point p minus epsilon so you can already see that in the picture that it is happening that the fx is in between p plus epsilon to p minus epsilon in between this range whenever my x varies in this interval so this means mod of okay just this expression which i have written here this basically means mod of fx minus p less than epsilon for all x belonging to a minus delta to a plus delta right so i'll just write that freshly over here that limit x tending to a fx equals to p this actually means this statement that i've written mod fx minus p less than epsilon for all x belonging to a minus delta to a plus delta
so this becomes the proper definition of limit okay and you must be studying this somewhere in real analysis you must have come across this definition but what a beautiful demonstration we have over here so with this demonstration you can just quickly understand what is happening in this inequality remember one more important thing over here that exactly at the point a if i put f of a my answer may not exist okay it may or may not exist so remember that okay exactly at the point a my limit may or may not exist or maybe the limit exists and the left hand limit is not equal to the right hand limit okay exactly when i'm putting x equals to a maybe the left hand limit and right hand limit are not same because maybe the function is not continuous here i've drawn a continuous function that's why they are being same so that's why in general when we write this definition we can safely exclude the point a from this interval okay we can simply exclude the point a from this interval that we have taken because we don't know what is happening exactly at a when x is tending towards a we know the fx value will also be somewhere around the p value okay either inside p plus epsilon or above p minus epsilon so inside the p neighborhood whenever x is inside the delta neighborhood right so we don't know exactly what is the scenario when the x value is exactly a. so we safely say that whenever x belongs to this interval provided we are not interested with exactly the a point so we exclude the a point from the definition so this becomes the definition of limit i hope you like the explanation please let me know in the comment box it would be really encouraging thank you